go ahead there, Rick. Oh, hi there. Hi, my name's uh, Kaladi Omura. My name's Rick Mitharu. I'm a... Uh, uh, I'm the founder of uh, Insaga in Brampton and um, uh, in Halton. I'm the uh, chef and owner of Rick's Good Eats, and it's very nice to meet you today. Nice hat. Oh, thank you. Did you see what it says? It says Championships NBA 2018. Champions, baby. <laughs> All right, we got some energy now. <laughs> oh, Start it off there, Rick. Don't even need coffee there. We do have coffee. We do. And, and and look what my mug says. Get it, girl? Mine says, I love TLK because that's a high school I went to. TL Kennedy. Yeah, TL Kennedy oh, in the house. Damn. Yeah. You know what Five high school and I went ten. To? What high what high school? What high school did Rick go to in Brampton? No, this uh, I don't know. How, why, how would I know that? I thought we were quizzing each other. We are, but I'm okay. We're gonna do this <laughs> quiz. Okay? <laughs> okay. Rick is from Brampton. Yes. I'm from Mississauga. Yeah. Rick is going to ask me questions about Mississauga. I'm going to ask Rick about Brampton. Yeah. We're going to see how much we know yeah. about our own cities, okay? Yeah. We're just going to go straight to the Wikipedia page. Oh, yeah. Okay? Got the wiki open here. All right. So should I ask you first? Go, you can ask me anything you want. I got I, I, I got everything handled from Mississauga. All right. What was the first mayor of Mississauga? First mayor of Mississauga. Yeah. As a city or a town? As a city. As a city? Yeah. It was... <laughs> Um, hold on. I got it. It was, oh, I don't have it. Hold on. It's, there was, okay. I can tell you that there was four other mayors prior to Hazel McCallion. Okay. Was it Ron Searle or something? That was one of them. He was one of them? He was a former town councillor and city councillor. Um, but he was, was it? He was, he was, I think, before Hazel McCallion. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to pass on this one. I, I apologize. I, I, so, according to the Googles. The Googles? Uh, Martin Dopkin? Martin Dobkin, yeah. yes, because it's a Martin Dobkin Park by Gates. Oh. Ah, okay, strike one. Okay. okay. I'm going to go with you, okay? Okay. What, sit, what year did the city of Brampton become incorporated as a city? Oh, jeez. Yeah, take that. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> I'm going to say um, the, the late 19... 19- Hundreds. Okay, you're so wrong. It's like 1974. Late 1900s. <laughs> okay, move on. Question for me. You want me to, I'll give you an easy one, okay? <laughs> Who's the mayor of Brampton today? Oh, um... Uh, Dude, are uh, you serious? Patrick Brown. Jeez. Patrick Brown. Wow, that took me a second. I've yeah. never met the guy. Yeah, well, so, we want him on the show. Yeah, so. Patrick, come Okay. On up. <laughs> We'll give you a quiz on Brampton. <laughs> yes, he will know about three at a time. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm kidding, Patrick. Come, come on the show. I'm not kidding. All right, go. Question. Um, Mississauga Brampton quiz. Rick is from Brampton. I am from Mississauga. Yes. Go. What is... I'm 0 for 1 right now. Okay, okay, okay. So, what is... Um, <laughs> Hurry up there, man. Yeah, the, it's called dead air. The elevation of Mississauga. The elevation. Come on. That's not even a question. <laughs> What yeah, yeah. What's the total population of Mississauga right now? 732,142. Well, that depends on uh, when you got these stats because currently Wikipedia says 721,599. Uh, I'm 0 for 2. Okay. But, but, but no, you could be correct because... Here's, a, here's a tough one, okay? New people in the last this is probably days. the toughest question you will ever get probably. in Brampton. Probably. Name one... City councillor. Um, One. Gerpreet uh, Dillon. Oh, okay. That was... Okay. <laughs> do, do, do. <laughs> All right. Keep going. Come on. Okay. Quizzes. Okay, come okay. on. Come on. Um, when was Square One first opened? 1974. I didn't even know the answer to that. But 1974. Sure. And you said that very it, confidently. Yeah. And I'm going to give that to you. 100% is 1974. I think so as well. Or 73. <laughs> it was around that time. It was around that time. But did you know that Square One, when it first opened, had an open air court in the middle? Did it really? It did. Nice. Right. And uh, in the in the winter time, there was an ice rink. That's pretty badass. Yeah. They and should do that again. Yeah, they should. But the thing is, you know, the thing is, I know what happened. People talked about it. We're trying to get pictures. Nobody has pictures of this That's in weird. the winter time. Well, if you think about it, back then you really had to have a a camera. Yeah, but in 1974, people had cameras. I know, but like how many people actually, it was cold. Yeah. It was winter. Yeah. 
They don't want to take their cameras out in the cold in winter. Let's find a photographer from 1974. I've I've searched like in Saga has been asking Damn. literally for the That's last like crazy. seven years. But so no question. If you guys are listening, if you guys have pictures, send it in. You could win a free mug that says "Get it, girl." All right, <laughs> name two actors from Brampton. Uh, Michael Sierra. Okay. And um, um, I know this. He went to our high school too. Shit. Um. Russell Russell Peters. Okay, I'll, yeah. I'll take I'll yeah. take that. Okay. Anyway, that's not the name I was looking for, but there was another. I forgot his name, but anyways, okay. that's a good one. That was a good one. Okay, good, good. Um, good. let's see here. So, man, I don't even have any more. You're you're you're, you're <laughs> killing me here. Okay, you ask me another one, then I'm gonna I'm gonna look for something here. Okay, well let, let's just just move on. Okay, okay, fine. let's All move right. on. Okay, good job. okay, good job. We are right to oh, so here here's a couple of I I I know more Mississauga useless facts than probably any human in in, in the history of Mississauga. You probably just do. because I mean, you people people tell me stuff. Yeah. Okay, and here are the coolest three things I've ever heard. Yeah. Okay. Barack Obama okay. has actually been to Mississauga. Really? Uh, his wife, uh, sorry, his sister actually married somebody in Burlington, Ontario. No way. Right? And in early 2000, when he was really kind of a nobody, kind of more of a senator, nobody would have known him. Right. They actually had um, a wedding ceremony at Summit Garden. Get out of here. Yeah. So Barack Obama. <laughs> That's insane. Could have been sitting at the same seat. Yeah. You could be having your chicken balls in. Right. Yeah, so yeah. no, seriously, because so funny, though, I, I, but I talked to somebody yeah. at Summit, right, yeah. and they actually told me that they had a picture of him in the background, but somebody <laughs> stole it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So that's useless fact number one. And it's a funny fact because it, I mean, who wants? I want to be eating chicken balls where Barack Obama was it, sitting. Yeah, it's like you remember a couple of years ago when he was trying to like make fun of Mississauga. It's like I well, I went through Mrs. Schmaga, Mrs. Snaga. He said that. He, yeah, he I knew exactly yeah, what yeah, yeah. to say. He was just okay. being a funny guy. Yeah, he's a funny guy, right? Number two. Okay. Okay. In the nineties, Blockbuster. Okay, oh. there was more Blockbusters in Mississauga than any other city on earth per capita. Damn. Okay. We love and I, movies. Yeah. And I know that because uh, I have a good friend that managed a Blockbuster and the head office of Dallas, a whole bunch of people were coming down because they wanted to see the city that had the most Blockbusters. Wow. Right? So okay. in the 90s, at the time uh, when it was peaking out, probably I'm going to say like 96, right. right? We had more Blockbusters in Mississauga per capita than any other city on earth. What was Blockbusters competition back then? Jumbo Video? Yeah. Free uh, popcorn. Bandito Video? Don't remember that. Um, what else? No, video, video 99? I was just looking for jump of video. Video 99. Okay. Family photo. Anyways, that's, Family that, photo. yeah, that's, that's really, Those niche. Are probably like that's the, really like niche. small. Yeah. Yeah. So they run ones. Number three. Okay. okay. Is that, you know, Colonel Sanders. Yeah. Okay. When he sold. Mustache as me. Yeah, he does. Well, I do. I have the same mustache as him. You look better in it. Though. Thanks, man. Yeah. I get so, the white hairs now too. <laughs> <laughs> he actually lived in Mississauga from 1965 mm. to 80. Okay. I remember hearing about this. Okay, yeah. but check this out. When he lived in Mississauga, you know there's a KFC at Tompkin and Dundas. Okay. Okay. And somebody, a few people told me this story. Same, same, uh, same story. So is it must. That, sorry, is that the one with the sign with the big bucket? Yeah. Yeah. Around? Yeah. Oh, yeah I don't think it turns around anymore. Okay. I don't think it's turned around since the mid '90s. Yeah. So, anyways, they uh, Colonel Sanders actually used to sit outside of that KFC saying bye to you. That's crazy. Isn't that crazy? That's so it's wild. like if you're like in 19 whatever, 77, and you're buying KFC from Tompkin and Dundas, yeah. right? As you walk out, it's not a statue of Colonel Sanders. It's, it's the sir. legit Colonel Sanders that what actually, like he was here from 65 to 80, so right? There, there, there might be some photos of that. I'd love to see photos of that. But that literally happened. about 10 people told me this over Facebook on, yeah. in, on, in, on Insaga and said that he used to sit outside of that KFC and say, see you later. You know, like, wow. I ho- enjoy your KFC. That's amazing. Like, well, it wasn't KFC then. It was just Kentucky Fried Chicken. Kentucky Fried Chicken. The, the acronym didn't exist then. That's but, amazing. Yeah, I want to so see like, a picture of Dude, this. that would be so amazing. Like, yeah. I'm sure pictures exist. So if yeah. there's pictures of Colonel Sanders outside of the Tompkin and Dundas <laughs> location, insane. please send it to Insaga. Yeah. We will... 
credit you. We'll we'll buy the pictures. Yeah, exactly. We will buy the pictures. Okay. That's historical, man. Yeah, but anyways, I want to go. Those like, those are my now. three absolutely useless facts about Mississauga. That's pretty cool. All right. I don't have useless facts, Brandon. Let's move on. All right, dude. You this. just came back from New York. I Tell did. us about that, man. So my wife surprised me with this epic trip. Yeah, Joe's uh, awesome. Joe's amazing. Yeah, she's amazing. Okay. Yeah, she's. Uh, she knew I was stressed out, and my birthday was on Friday, so she's like, "All right, I'm going to take you away somewhere." I had no idea where I was going. I just she packed everything for me. Um, I woke up and we went to the airport. I found out that morning that we we're going to the airport, and so I'm trying to figure out where we're going. And I get to the I get to the check in. She's like, "Okay, go stand over there. I'll go check in." And the staff, the Air Canada staff, were like, "Oh, your wife is amazing. Like she's so nice." I'm like, "Yeah, I know, but I have no idea where I'm going." <laughs> so customs to get into uh, so you got to do customs before so I found out that I was going to the states okay so customs takes forever like the lineup is huge going to the states going to the states yeah. like, do you have to take off your shoes and stuff yeah yeah, yeah okay. you got to take off your belt your shoes your everything yeah um, so I we got in line and it was moving so slow we almost missed our flight like yeah. f- 10 minutes before 5 minutes before our flight because the lineup took an hour and 10 minutes did you did you tell them who you were <laughs> that, like, did you matter. did you go like this and go? Yeah, I tried. Do you everything. know who I, said, I am? I said my wife is not feeling well. Our flight's in five minutes. They're like, sorry, U.S. Customs does not allow anyone to pass. Cool. So everyone in the line is freaking out because so many people are just missing their flights. So as soon as we get out, I start running to the gate, and Joe's like, "Okay, I'll just fall, like just come by. I'll, I'll hold the plane because she kind of pulled her back yeah. the night before." So I'm running, running, running. No idea where I'm going. I run. I get to the gate. I'm like. Has the plane left that yet? And they're like, no, you're still good to go. I'm like, good. My wife's coming. Hold the plane. And I look up, like, New York. Oh, nice. we're going to New York. But it was epic, man. It was, uh, we I, we got there. We went for massages. We ate some beautiful food. Uh, went, you know, just walking around the city. Lived like locals. Uh, and just had an overall amazing time. So, dude, I was watching your stories. And yeah. I was super jealous. You went, uh, I'm a big whiskey fanatic. Um, and you sent me this list, this menu of this place you went to that had literally like eight or nine pages of whiskey, bourbon, oh, scotch. What, what did you try? Okay, so the name of this place, I, if you guys go to New York, you have to definitely check this place out. It's called the Iron Room, I think. Okay. I'm going to find it right now. But basically, there was pages and pages, like you said, of bourbon, whiskey. The cool thing is you can go there and you can buy a bottle and reserve it. So there's a bunch of locker rooms behind you. And so you can buy it They'll put in this this locker room. So anytime you come into that uh, restaurant or the bar, you can ask for your bottle, your personalized bottle, nice. and and they'll pour it straight from from that bottle. So the place was called um, what is it called? The, the sorry, the Flairton Room, um, and it's a live jazz bar. There's live jazz music happening. Nice dim lights, um, bourbon and whiskey everywhere, like top shelf, like from all over the world. Yeah. I had, um, so it was my birthday. So I was like, all right, I have to have something that's rare. And so I asked my, my waitress, I'm like, you know, bring me, she was bringing me out all these different bourbons to try. And you went balls out. I went balls out. She's giving me all these really cool, like old fashions and whatnot. And then she brings out, she's like, okay, I'm going to give you three choices. And here are the bourbons and here's a story behind them. And the one that I had, um, it was William something. I'm going to find the name soon, but it was from the Buffalo Trace company. Okay. And Buffalo Trace is one of my favorite bourbon brands in uh, in Kentucky. So she brings out this bottle and uh, first she brings out three bottles and it was like, and I Googled all three of them and I, and I, I really like the story about this one bottle that it was only, there was only about maybe 30 bottles left in the world and the man who made this batch had just passed away. And this bottle was like a $9,000 bottle. Shit. And she's like, <laughs> all right, this is the bottle. I'm like, okay, <laughs> how much is it for the shot? And I'm shaking yeah, here. Yeah. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> she's like, it's $200 for an hour. $200 right. for one shot. For one shot. So I was like, fuck, if I'm going to do, do it, it, I'm going to do it. I did it. Okay. <laughs> and oh, you see the guy walking up the ladder and all the bartenders looking at me like, who is this guy ordering this shot, right? <laughs> so yeah, I was like, all right, cool. So I took a video of that and they grabbed the bottle to bring it down. She comes to the table and she pours it. You know, they, they bring the glass up, they pour it. And they bring you a little, uh, little more of those little pitcher things uh, with distilled water. Yeah. Because um, they don't want to, you add one or two drops and it kind of uh, kind of brings it alive. Okay. And uh, what that. happens is when, when there's a rare bourbon, 
it is a little bit peppery, uh, a little spicy. So it was spicy. It was a 62%, 120% proof, um, but it was beautiful. How did it taste? It was, man, it was like a nice cinnamon, peppery kind of uh, aromatics. Like it, it was smooth. Um, and I, had, I added like about two drops of the distilled water and I had to add about six drops just to kind of enjoy it. And I sat with that glass for like 45 minutes and I was watching the live jazz band, the atmosphere, the vibe. I'm all about experiences. Yeah, of course. So if this glass of bourbon is going to add to my experience, I'm going to go and I'm going to do it. And I had the most, the best time of my life because I was sitting with Joe, we're having charcuterie, we're enjoying this nice glass. And I also also asked for another glass of uh, old fashioned just to kind of enjoy. And then the $200 bourbon to sip on and just, enjoy it on its own it's your birthday weekend yeah, man, too man. yeah, yeah so you went all, that, was, all that. that was that, that was, was your great. birthday gift right it was, the it 200 dollars shot that, i'm assuming that's the most expensive shot that you've ever done. oh yeah oh, yeah? yeah i could have bought a bottle there for like i was thinking about it afterwards i'm like i gotta bought a bottle for like 400 bucks that's i didn't put it in my own locker <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I went with a $200 shot. It was like, it's right, it's worth it. It sounds like it was worth you it. You know what? So. Yeah, I'm never going to try that bourbon again. Yeah. I'm never going to buy a $7,000 bottle of bourbon. True. Maybe later on in life. Who knows? Yeah. But it was great. It was worth it. I loved cool. it. Cool. Here, here's my whiskey story. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to Tokyo now. Oh, right? Okay. So, sorry. Quick thing. Okay. Go ahead. Interrupt me. So go ahead. Interrupt <laughs> you. There's two people. There's two groups beside me and they're both from Tokyo. Oh, really? And people from Japan and Tokyo love whiskey. Dude, it, it, the whiskey culture in Japan is, uh, it's off the charts now. Yeah. You know, it's like every, you go to bars in uh, Japan, there are, you know, kind of whiskey sections of bars, yeah. you know, and uh, you just go down the street. It's, what whiskey bar do you want to go to? That's and amazing. I'm like, yeah, so it's, it's amazing. And like, you've never seen so much whiskey, right? Yeah. And uh, the only Canadian whiskey they have there is CC. You're right. Uh, you know, CC. Crown, yeah. Maybe? Crown, I hardly saw, but okay. so so here's my whiskey story, yeah. right? So uh, last year I was lucky enough to go down to um, Japan uh, with Air Canada and JNTO, um, and they asked me to be part of the first inaugural flight from um, from uh, Montreal to Tokyo. Yeah, right. And I was lucky enough to go with Miss Universe Canada, that, yeah. right? And it was it was an epic trip, and we stayed at this incredible hotel um, called uh, I forgot what it was called, but uh, I'll get the name in a sec. Well, you know, you're just traveling with Miss Universe Canada. Uh, yeah, so it's like, so <laughs> the first night we get to this crazy hotel uh, and uh, we go to the bar and it overlooks Tokyo, nice. right? Uh, and I'm sitting there with uh, the Air Canada dude um, and um, uh, Mark and the, the manager of the hotel, right? And he keeps on buying me drinks. Right. So he's buying me drinks and I'm like, in, in my head, I'm like, I, I'll buy the drinks. Right. Just because, I mean, this trip is paid for. Right. You know, I, I don't want to I don't want to take advantage of free drinks. Yeah. I just so I'm just like, I'll pay for it. Right. But so he's like buying me a shot. So he gets me Hibiki 17. Right. Nice. And I take it. I'm like, OK, that's awesome. Hibiki yeah. 17 at the place was 40 bucks a shot. Then he comes with uh, Hibiki 21. Oh, wow. Right. Which is, I believe, 80 to 100 dollars a shot. Yeah. I'm like, dude. I'll pay for it, yeah. right? And then, and then he comes. The one of the guy comes over with Hibiki thirty. Oh shit! And I'm like, brings it the goods. Yeah, stuff. I'm like, I didn't even know this existed, yeah. right? <laughs> and I'm looking at, it, I'm like, how much is this, yeah. right? And the guy's like, three hundred fifty dollars a Damn. shot, right? And I'm like, at that time, I'm like, no, because if there was a chance that he was going to pay for it, like, yeah. the, like I wasn't going to do it. Right. You know what I mean? So I just stopped there. I'm just like, I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I, it's not my birthday yeah, weekend. Yeah. You know, it's like, <laughs> I'm not paying $350 a shot. Yeah. But the funny thing is like, he kept on buying me drinks and I'm like, why is he buying me drinks? Right. So I finally said to him in Japanese, I'm like, why are you buying me drinks? Why are you getting how, how me drunk? Do that, by the way? Uh, uh, how do I say it? It's like, no ippai, uh, nonderu no... I, see, my Japanese is really bad. Yeah, it's, like, it's like my Punjabi. It, yeah, it's like it's <laughs> so bad. It's <laughs> it's like, I know how to say it when I'm, I'm yeah, drinking. Yeah. What are you right? drinking? Yeah, it's like... We well, need to get some shots up in here. See, <laughs> watashi no nihongo wa honto ni wadui. Oh, I, that just, I just said my Japanese is really bad. Okay, okay so they understand that now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So any Japanese person is like, oh, I understand now. Yeah, yeah. But the, So I asked him straight up, I'm like, so dude, why are you buying me so many drinks yeah. in Japanese, right? And he's like, Khaled? I'm so sorry. And I'm like, what? Right? I'm like, what I do? Yeah. Right? And then he's like, you cannot go to the gym or the pool in this hotel. And I'm like, because of my tattoos. 
Oh. Right? Because I am Japanese and I look, I, I could look like mafia. If you're any other race and stuff yeah, like that, yeah. you're totally fine, yeah. right? But I'm like, I have tattoos. And I'm like, dude, you could have told me this at the hotel, like when I got out of the elevator, you know. So he's buying you shots just to apologize? Dude, he <laughs> bought me like $300 that's worth of drinks crazy. just to apologize to tell me that I can't go to wow. the gym. Anyways, that's my whiskey. Story. That's hilarious. All right. <laughs> <laughs> let's move on. It sounds like you had an awesome time in New York. It was great. Yeah. Okay. So let's get into more serious topics. All right. Okay. Kind of a serious topic is that um, in Insaga and Brampton, uh, Peel Police looking to recruit from Quebec following a current controversial ban. Yes. Right? So if you don't know this controversial ban, it is about... It's called Bill 21, and it pretty much bans teachers, police officers, judges, and many other wearing items like hijabs, turbans, kippahs, and crucifixes in the course of their dirty, duty, right? Yeah. So in other words, like if you're a cop, right, and you wore a turban before, you have to take it off or you're not allowed to work. Mm-hmm. That's fucked up. That's so fucked up. Yeah, it's like I, it's, it's it's moving backwards. Yeah, right. It's, you know, so, you would think that we're in an era where where we are over that, um, because I remember a long time ago the RCMP had banned a sick man from wearing a turban, and it was a big thing back then. Uh, and this was like 20, 30 years. I can't remember how long, but and it was it was a big deal. And uh, for the people that that are being banned, I say fight back, fight back the governments fight back, get petitions signed because don't allow your government to 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 dictate on what you can do because if we start allowing that to happen, then who knows what else can happen. Yeah. You know, right. and, and there's there's TV shows out there that are showing like, I don't know if you're watching The Hands, Handmaid's Tale and we just started watching that and it's the same thing where there's a new government that takes over the world and, and they're just literally dictating what you can do. Just imagine a world in 50 years, 100 years where government takes over. I mean, they've already, they've already taken over. Yeah. But I, that's the most fucked up thing I've heard ever. Yeah, it's, it, it is really messed up. And, and the thing is, too, it's like, uh, I'm, I'm glad we live here in, yeah. in Mississauga, Brampton, Peel. Uh, like, just because the Toronto region... Right, you know the GTA. It is the most multicultural region in the world. It, that that has actual facts. Facts. Yep. Right. Yep. Is that we have more uh, ethnicities, more cultures within Toronto and the area than yeah. any other place in the world. Yeah. No, right. For sure. So I like the fact that Peel Police um, is open to recruiting anybody that is affected by this. Yeah. Right. And uh, so I'm I'm glad to be part of kind of the, the positive outcome, yeah, you know, the, no, the area that has a positive outcome. But just to, to think about what people in Quebec, Quebec are going through, yeah. that, that's messed up. It's, it's, it's we are going backwards in the sense, um, and, it, you know, I, I hate bringing up, you know, like white privilege, you know, yeah. that, that word white privilege. Right. Um, but that's the truth. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because most government is white in Canada. Yeah. You, you look at you look at council in Mississauga. Yeah. It's all white. Yeah, there's no you know? diversity whatsoever. There's zero diversity yeah. and if in Mississauga. There is, you're not heard. Yeah, at least in Brampton. Yeah. At least in Brampton, there 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 is other ethnic uh, groups within is, council. But even when there was ethnic groups in council, no one really listened to them last time. Like last year, the last couple of years, like it was it was more of of this is what we're going to do and this is how we're going to do it. And yeah, they raised their voices, but but, but the big can, thing is that they got voted in. Right, they got exactly. voted in, yeah, and yeah. that's huge that is because huge. in in Mississauga, um, like I said, we've been around since 1974, yeah. <laughs> right? But we have not had uh, a minority council member in the history. Can so I it's look like premier. Uh, one day, <laughs> if, if I went for it right now, I could yeah. win. I know I could win. But uh, you know what? You're right. <laughs> you're right. Bonnie, hey, don't Bonnie. stop looking at hey, me. <laughs> Patrick Brown, I'm coming for you as well. <laughs> We gonna take over. <laughs> Remember it's, this podcast. And when we become episode. when we become mayors, we're still gonna have the podcast, dude. You know how much you know how much like <laughs> dirt they have on us. Yeah, it's yeah. like <laughs> these or guys. Dirt. It's like you know, it's like they swear on their podcast. Yeah. Don't so, vote for them. So what? So, um, anyways, but yeah, but, I think it's I think it's the most fucked up thing. And it, you know, it, it's crazy because in France they've already done the, the ban there since like 2004. Like if you're a police officer or someone in the public sector, you can't wear a turban. Or a hijab or whatever. Maybe that's be. in France. That's in France. Yeah. I didn't even and, know that. And uh, and they've had that going for so long. I don't know if it's still implemented. I'm pretty sure it is because if they have it, then Quebec is obviously 
got it. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, guys, if you're listening, fight back. That's the only way that you can win with this is just keep fighting, 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 even if it takes a year, two years, three years. Don't let that shit take over, man. Yeah. And I'd say, too, I mean, yes, fight back, but also, uh, you know, I, I, I vote. Yeah, right? you know it's like yeah. it's like the reason why these That's you know it, what is yeah. a I don't know what the party is but I think it's a the, the party yeah it's a, it's a Quebec uh, the Quebec Liberal Party uh, yeah the Quebec Liberal Party they're not liberals <laughs> but yeah it's like yeah. I'm surprised the Liberal Party did that was it no the Quebec Liberal Party and Quebec's Solidaire voted against. Oh, they against. voted against yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I apologize the mistake. But I think it's great that Peel Police is doing that. I mean, it's a, it's a great way for for people that are maybe stuck in Quebec that can't get a job as a teacher or a police officer. They have that option of of going outside of Quebec. And the the beauty of it is they're bilingual. Yeah, they can speak or they're they're actually not even bilingual. Is there a word for learning having more than three four languages? Trilingual? Quadlingual? Quadlingual? Yeah, <laughs> Trilingual. I have no idea. <laughs> but they, if they, like, just, just imagine a, a sick man that uh, knows is French, uh, English, and, and Punjabi. Uh, you know, that's a benefit to Peel. Like you said, it's a very diverse uh, city, so it works out. So this, uh, this article also says that the legislation doubled down because it requires citizens to uncover their faces when accessing public services like municipal transit and the legal system. I can kind of understand that. I understand that. Yes. We're talking about the full garb that you the, can only see their, their yeah, eyes, the, right? The full hijab, I think. Yeah. Okay. Burka, yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, I agree with that. I mean, if you're getting a public photo taken uh, for your license or you want, you need to be identified, then yeah, you, you can't. I, I, I do agree with that. I think you should yeah. be able to. To uncover your face to, to show I agree. identity on that. Yeah. yeah so, like, so I'm glad that we live in an area that is the positive end yes, of this, yes. right? Rather than the negative end. Um, That's right. And uh, yeah, so All right. let's move on. Let's do this. All right. about next okay, again? the next thing we're going to talk about are three cuisines you'd like to see in Mississauga. Okay. We could even say Brampton. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So let's just say in this area. In this area. Okay, three cuisines. Rick, go. I was recently looking for Indonesian food. Okay, because uh, my family, Joe's family, is from Indonesia. Yeah, from Malaysia, and uh, I, I, you know, I, I I found some restaurants in uh, in Toronto, but not as much in Mississauga or Brampton. Um, and I would love to see more uh, more of that. Um, and there's so many sectors of Indonesian food, and, and if you haven't tried that Indonesian, have you tried Indonesian food? I have not, but oh I'm I'm just gosh. looking online right now because I have a feeling that they're actually, or that it's. I haven't heard of them. So, yeah, so because we were actually, my, my wife and I were talking about this. It's called Lion City Restaurant. Okay. Okay. Oh, I've heard and, of Lion yeah, City. and they, I th- believe it's uh, Credit View and Eggling, uh, Credit View and uh, Burnham Thorpe area, okay. the, the, the new Mississauga Chinatown. Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah. And I think that they sell Indonesian food there. Okay. Yeah. Authentic Indonesian food? I think so. Okay, cool. I'm going to yeah. check that out. Um, that was my one. And then the other one I came up with was. Excuse me, coffee's making me burp here. Um, I put alcohol, I put whiskey in it. Nice. <laughs> um, What's the other one? The other one I was thinking more like Mediterranean, like fresh Mediterranean Greek. I know they have Greek restaurants, but like if you go to Toronto, you go to Taste Danforth, you get that authentic good yeah. Greek food, right? It's you not like Mister Greek. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You don't find that authentic good stuff here, and you know it would be nice to 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 have something of that Mediterranean kind of fresh seafood, fresh fishes, pickled stuff, and that goodness uh, True. in the Peel region. That's See, I'm going to I'm just going to add a third one to yeah. this list. And I I hate I, I shouldn't say I hate, but I love going down to Japan, yeah. right? And the Japanese food down there is so there's so much to choose from. Like sushi is like it's almost a North American thing. Right. You know what I mean? You go down to Japan it's and totally sushi is like maybe one or two percent of the entire cuisine. Right. right, right? right. And uh, you go down there like, you know, like what kind of sushi do you have in Canada? I'm like, all you can eat. They're like, what's that? Yeah. Like they don't know. <laughs> right. But what they have totally down there is like, you know, obviously they have ramen, but they have like this thing called um, uh, okonomiyaki. Yes. Right. So have, have you had it? Yeah, so, mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so it's like it's like a pancake thing, oh, right, where you have a grill in front of you. Yeah. And the cool thing is it's very uh, interactive, yeah. right? So it's like you go out with uh, your boys and uh, each one of us will buy one of those okonomiyaki yeah. things, right? And then you actually cook it for everybody. That's amazing. Right? Yeah. So there's so many, and, and that's something that I think would do well here because it's, you know, in, in Canada, mm-hmm. it's, uh, especially around here, it's, it's sushi, 
Yeah. You know, it's like yeah. maybe ramen. Yeah. Right. And outside of that, you ask somebody that hasn't been to Japan what their cuisine is. Yeah. And they have no idea. You're, right? you're totally right about that. I think, I think, you know, people need to be a little bit more authentic when it comes to their yes. food. You know, bringing authenticity to your food is, is not a bad thing because that's how we learn about cultures. That's how we learn about people. And that's how we develop conversations. Yeah. You know, I, I think the, the greatest thing about food is, is creating conversations around a table. We can probably, you know, if you and I disliked each other and we're at a dinner table with a bunch of people, we'll have a conversation because there's food in front of us, there's drinks, and we'll still... We'll be in front of each other and we'll conversate because there's food in front of us. Yeah. And we'll talk about how great this is, how authentic there is, and the story behind it, you know? And I think people are afraid to do that. But I think that should be the new trend of, of not being afraid to show your authentic food to the, the population out there. Uh, don't, I agree. don't Americanize it. Don't North Americanize it. You're right. Because it's like every, so every culture food, let's just say Indian food, yeah. there's probably, uh, I'm going to say that what we've seen in, in, in our areas yeah. is probably about 25% of what they offer. Oh yeah. Right. So yeah, it's like, it's just like shit over and over. Yeah. So it's, it's like, like, it's like Chinese food, same thing over and over. Yeah. Over so Greek it's, food, it's almost like, like don't, yeah, you're right. Don't yeah. be afraid yeah. to show off the rest of the 75%. Yeah. yeah. Because you know what? That 75% is going to be damn good. Yeah. Yeah. And I've done that in my restaurant a few times where I've brought traditional Punjabi food. Like my mom makes this thing called curry. And yeah. it's like a yogurt base with fried vegetable fritters. Um, it's like this, this thick, gravy and you eat it with rice and it's the most delicious thing you'll ever have uh and we introduced it to the restaurant one day just for just to see what happened and uh non-indian people came and they're like we want to try it and they tried it and they loved it and so we'll once once more bring authentic food and i think that just shows that people are ready for it yeah and i i think yeah you're if, if there's any area that's ready for it it, yeah. it is the toronto region just because we are so multicultural we know what other food uh, cultures uh, yeah. taste like right and I think that's why you have been so um, successful because you experiment in the kitchen and, and throw it at people and they're like do you like it yeah you know they might like it they might not yeah. right and I see the most successful restaurants uh, within uh, Mississauga and Brampton yeah. uh, even in Toronto obviously yeah. that the the ones that experiment are the ones that are most successful yeah. right uh, you know I bring up my boys at uh, the Wilcox right yeah. you know uh, the chef used to go around the world trying out things yeah. right and then bringing it back to the Wilcox yeah. who else is doing that Nobody. you know it's like you know it's, it's it's very rare especially in Mississauga and Brampton mm -hmm. right that's but, like the restaurant in Mississauga the, the Japanese Peruvian um, uh, restaurant there uh, what's it called again the from oh Wilcox. yeah uh, uh, Kage Kage yeah Kage I, you know I would have never thought that that Japanese and Peruvian food would go well together exactly and it was the most delicious thing ever you yeah. know and it was the first time I tried Peruvian food and that was through Japanese way of cooking uh, and I think it's brilliant. And I mean, that's, that's actually one thing that I've been thinking about doing is I want to do a pop-up shop where I want to go back into that pop-up shop side of things and, and, and bring authentic Punjabi food to the community and get them to try. And it, may, it could be all vegetarian. That'd be awesome. But I want them to try the authentic Punjabi food and see what people are, are missing out and see their reactions to it. Yeah. I think it'd be great to, to try that out and, and, and see what comes out of it. I, I'm the guy that always goes to a restaurant and always tries things that I've never tried before. I've yeah. never I've never heard of or tried. It's it's how well the, the server that's can right. sell me yes. on that dish, yes. right? Um, and that's what I love. You know, it's like, okay, it's like, what's the most popular dish on the menu? That's yeah. what I always say. Me too. Right? Yeah. And, the, and then if they describe it well enough, yeah. I'm like, so I'm like, ordering it. Yeah. Right. And I, and I love that. That's the best. And you know, that, and, that, and that's what staff have to do at a restaurant is, is train their staff. Uh, or sorry, owners have to do it at a restaurant is train their staff to yep. sell stuff. Yeah. You know, sometimes I'll go to my staff and right away, I'll just tell them like, uh, so what's your top three things here? Yeah. And they're like, uh, <laughs> the cheeseburger. And now they know because okay. they're confident. Yeah. But before when they first started, I would just do What that. is it? What is it on your end? Oh, uh, my end? The three most popular things on your menu. Um, I love the T-Bolt. That's okay. like my go-to, the, the tandoori bacon BLT. Yeah. Uh, the tandoori fried chicken um, and the butter chicken loaded fries. Okay. Those are my top three. Nice. Which I haven't had in months because I just... I haven't eaten. I just, I tend to, and not that I don't like my food. I just yeah. can't eat my food every single day. Love your samosas, buddy. Oh, your samosas yeah. are ridiculous. Thank you. It's like whenever uh, we have uh, parties, uh, Rick's always invited because he brings samosas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Poker nights. So, yeah, I think those, uh, yeah, any other cuisines you want to see, let us know in the comments below. Yeah, I would love to hear that. But I would love to see more Japanese cuisine. That's cool. Authentic. In authentic Japanese cuisine that nobody's heard of, yeah. you know, uh, okonomiyaki. Um, uh, oh, I can't even remember the. Uh, there's another one called. Um, it's it's. 
Oh man, what's the Japanese street food that people like? I mean, just on stick, just food on the just meat and stuff on. Stick. Oh, there's a uh, yakitori. 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 Yeah. That's that's the grilled stuff, the yeah. chicken, right? Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. the kushitori, which is the meats and yeah. stuff. Uh, but there's also you know the um, those uh, balls. Those, oh, uh, I just had that over the weekend. Oh my god, uh, I'm forgetting all the names. The squid balls. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna look. It it's up like right a now. squid. It's like a seafood donut. Yeah. It's. Uh, <laughs> is it takoyaki? No. Ta- takoyaki. takoyaki balls. Takoyaki yeah, yeah, balls. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, they we sell had that that it's like a nice, uh, like a, oh, it's like a beautiful velvety pancake batter with squid in it and a bunch of other stuff. It's so good. Yeah. yeah. I love that stuff. So, yeah, no, yeah. yeah. There's, there's so much we can do without the cuisines. Yes. So, okay. Move on. Move on. To the next topic. So we're going to actually have guests coming up this summer. Yes. Okay. We're going to have uh, Santina Morella, uh, a.k.a. Well, I guess it's really... Anthony Corelli, a.k.a. Santino yeah, Morella, yeah. Yes. right? Former WWE star on our show, uh, talking... Uh, he's, the, uh, he's the guy that's like, does this, does and then, this. yeah. Like, he, he's, he's he's done it all. Claw, like, he's right? done it all. Or he whatever, Intercontinental. Yeah. Tag team. Like, he, he legit star from Mississauga. Uh, ever since in Saga, we become friends. Uh, awesome. Yeah, cool dude. So he's going to be on the show. Nice. Uh, we're going to get uh, Patrick Brown. Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> on the show. <laughs> he's not. Uh, he's never coming on yeah, the show. No. I'm going to try to bring some chefs on the show as well. Perfect. Um, that are in the city. That'd and, be awesome, uh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll bring some of our political friends in. Yeah. Uh, and just, uh, you know, well, I'm not going to promise anyone right now, but we're going to have some surprise guests. We are going to have definite surprise yes. guests. It's going to be fun. Okay. We're working on something. Yeah, so on you'll something. only know when we release And it. also, I know we had this conversation the other day, but I think the previous episodes I would... We're talking about putting that on uh, on uh, like stuff like iTunes and Spotify and whatnot. Yes, because a lot of people have been asking. So I am working on that. Cool. Um, and yeah, that'll be our previous shows that we'll put that on there. So when you're driving, you can listen to it on your uh, your in your car or wherever you are. Dude, three episodes in, seventy five thousand yes. listeners. Crazy. Hey. That's, that's yeah, awesome. yeah, hey, yeah, hey. People Crazy. actually like what we say. Well, no, they, <laughs> the funny thing is, that people like and they don't like. Yeah, and I'm okay with that. Yeah, it's like we're not here to we, please everyone. I put out a clip of us just talking about. You remember when you didn't know what a subway was? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Do you know what a subway stands for? I found out. No, it's actually called subterranean train. Okay, that's why the short form is subway. Oh, subterranean meaning underground. Anyways, that's that, I was just. <laughs> You know how you go through a rabbit hole in Google yeah. and you just keep on going and going and you're like, yeah. wait, hold on. I, I, just, know what, I know what subway means now. But what is the remainder? I don't know. Sub, what does sub mean? What does the S mean? What does the U Subterranean. What does the B mean? I don't know. Anyways. So, <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. You go to that rabbit yeah, hole. Yeah, yeah. Going, True. Going. Okay, okay, so let's go to the Netflix. To- Netflix. Netflix. <laughs> Netflix. <laughs> Netflix, okay? <laughs> what have we watched on Netflix this month, Rick? Um, so I currently started watching, um, I've been watching a lot of Netflix. Uh, you, know, you have been or I you have not? Been. Um, but the recent show that I just started watching again, which season three came out, uh, was Designated Survivor. Okay. Have you, you watched season one, two? Okay. I've I know watched, it's cheesy. It is beyond cheesy. But it's so good. It's Dude, just, it's not, okay. I liked it. There's I liked too it. much going on. Like You know what? Yeah, there is, but it's just. It's one of those shows where I come home from work and I'm just stressed and I just want to de-stress and I don't want to watch them. You just have a crush on Kiefer, hey? Eh? Kiefer's all amazing. And when he was on 24, I down a lot. Dude, ringtone. 24 was a and legit show. Get, do, 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 well, I had that ringtone going again, like <laughs> that, that 24, do, 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 or I, I can't remember now. But I used to have that ringtone on my phone. Yeah. It was amazing. Designated Survivor season one, not bad. Designated Survivor season two was just way overboard. I know, it's like getting cheesier and cheesier. It's like he's like some like guy off the street. Now he's the president. Yeah. And, but I mean, it's a cool story. I mean, just imagine that happens. Your whole government goes to shits. Okay. And there's one designated survivor. And he <laughs> takes over the parliament. So uh, the cool thing is um, one of the, uh, a couple of the shots on uh, season three of Designated Survivor actually was filmed in Mississauga. That's crazy. Uh, filmed at the Living Arts Center and I believe in the City Hall. Oh, damn. Yeah. I think uh, when, I guess when they're going out um, campaigning, oh, okay, the, okay. a couple of campaign stops yeah, from yeah, Mississauga. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I gotta get these guys to the restaurant when they come to when they come to Mississauga. Man. Keeper, make this happen, dude. I, I, I don't have no connections. I don't know, dude. I'm in like, if I, if I could talk to Kiefer, <laughs> Kiefer, I love I love saying that name, Kiefer? man. Kiefer, he's Canadian as well. He's totally Canadian. Love that. So, a couple of shows I've been watching. Okay, so I just finished Get Out yesterday. It was it was a movie, right? And it was kind of messed up horror slash. Uh, movie, yeah. yeah, it's kind of messed up. It's like it. I won't give it away, but it's about. Uh, 
one of the actors uh, that is African American. Okay. Okay. And then he goes with his white girlfriend to meet his white parents. Oh. And then yeah. it goes to fucking shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it goes like <laughs> they're they're like maybe we shouldn't go and no shit you shouldn't yeah. go <laughs> right. You're like well, why do you want to meet white parents? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You know. And then he's like I gotta go home. And then it just all shit <laughs> just breaks loose. It's like you know it's like, as soon as he says I gotta get I gotta go home. Yeah. yeah. Right. And then then like yeah. Anyways, it, it was a good movie. It was like one of those movies that you're like where's this going? Yeah. All right. <laughs> and at the end you're like okay this is creepy and it's one of those movies that it's so disturbing that you kind of have to watch like Adam Sandler before you go to bed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you don't want to go to bed with that thought. Yeah. So you just watch a little bit of an Adam Sandler movie. Yeah. Just so you can clear that yeah, thought yeah, just, and then just, go to bed. Just so you can sleep. Yeah. Because, you know, it guaranteed nightmares. Yeah, exactly. Actually, speaking of Adam Sandler, he came up with a movie uh, with Jennifer Anderson called Murder Mystery. <laughs> okay. How was that? <laughs> it was actually pretty funny. Was it? it was hilarious. Adam Sandler movies are the best. Okay. I, I think they're fucking I w- hilarious. I wouldn't classify them the best. They're hilarious, man. Okay. You know what? The Wedding... Uh, the Wedding... What was that? The Wedding... What was that movie? The Wedding... The Wedding Singer. singer. Yeah, yeah, The Wedding Singer. Fucking yeah, hilarious. okay. Uh, but we're talking Adam Sandler for 15 years ago. Yeah. He does not, he's not trying anymore. He's not, but he doesn't he's have just to. Like, he's just... like, give me a paycheck of $10 million and I'll do a Netflix thing. And it's still funny. Yeah. I think okay. he's great. I think he's the best. Okay. He's just him. So I'm, I'm a pure geek. Yeah. Okay. And I'm sure a lot of uh, viewers will agree to that. Okay. They'll be like, yes, I, do. Yeah. I, I, I agree. <laughs> I agree. I finally agree with him. Yeah. Right. He's a, he is a geek. <laughs> right. So I like watching Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad is the best show, yes. uh, I think, ever in the history of TV, yeah. in my opinion. I've seen it three times now on, on Netflix. Oh, wow. Right. It's one of those things Are that. Are you an undercover I, drug dealer? Uh, no, <laughs> but I shift, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So the thing is, whenever I'm bored, yeah, I just watch it, okay. right? And uh, yeah, it's, it's phenomenal. It's one of those things that if you have not watched Breaking Bad, you have not. I've watched. only seen like half of first season. Dude. I'm going to get back into it. Dude, it is the best the show of all time. I can only like, catch up on planes. I should start traveling more. I'm just going to go fly to Tokyo, watch Netflix, come back. Dude, I, I, I watched the entire season seven of Suits. Going, um, going yeah, to yeah. Tokyo. That's the best time. To yeah, watch. it was amazing. Yeah. So, uh, another thing that I watched, and you you could probably appreciate, is uh, street food. Oh yes, I've seen the first three episodes of that, and it was brilliant. It, yeah, the way, the way they, way shot, they it, shot it. Yeah, and the stories of the, these of these street food oh vendors. I mean, because we're not talking, um, you know, some places we're not talking first world countries. We're talking no. third world countries yeah. that their entire livelihood and their support system, they, they have a street food um, cart or yes. whatever it is. Yeah. And they get successful. Yeah. Now they have to support a family of 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I'm just yeah. like, what? You know, it's like, it's it's amazing to see their story, the right? And it's so sad. It, yeah, it's so sad. And it's also very motivational because you think about these guys, they're, they're entrepreneurs at heart. And they're literally hustling uh, to make ends meet, like you said. Uh, I remember that first episode. I can't remember where it was, but that lady... Uh, with oh the crazy yeah. Uh, and, yes. Uh, uh, I think it was with with the goggles. With the goggles. Yeah. Oh my god. It was a Vietnam or something or Indonesia, but yeah. And there was one scene that reminded me of my mom, and she's like, you know, she was so the lady's mom when she was a kid. She's like the 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 lady wanted to to help her mom, and the the, the mom's like, well, you can't you can't handle this. You can't do this. And then the way she looked, she's like, I can't do this. Let me fucking show you what I can do. Yeah. And then she just got motivated and just started doing it. And it just reminded me of my mom because if someone tells my mom that you can't do it, she's like, no, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to do it 10 times better. And it was just that, 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 uh, that spirit that she had just to keep going. Yeah. But it's just, it's, it's amazing to watch. It was, yeah. it was such an amazing story. I think it's probably one of the better food shows I've ever watched yeah. on Netflix. Uh, Same the- producers from Chef's Table, I believe, as well. Is it? Yeah. It was one of those, uh, I think Chef's Table or one of those, um, just the way that they tell stories, the storytelling behind it is beautifully done. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. And in yeah. one of the episodes, I think it was Indonesia or something. Yeah. Uh, the food vendors are wi- female, right? Yes. Yeah. And they're up to a hundred years old. Yeah. Right. And they're like, and and just watching them, they're like they're riding bikes. So yeah. everybody rides bikes, I guess, in Indonesia. Yeah. She's just riding a bike, just hops on the, the back seat, yeah. not holding on to anything without a helmet. She's yeah. like, okay, thanks for dropping me off. Yeah. You know, I'm like, <laughs> what? <Yeah. laughs> It just shows you the love. When you love what you do, it's not work. No, you're right. It's 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 all pure passion. And if you're working at 100, 
and you're still making food for, for people, um, it's a beautiful thing. And to preserve that now through a show like this, uh, it's, it, I hope it motivates people to, to keep their cultures going uh, and, and showcasing what their, their cultures are all about. And that's the biggest thing that I saw that uh, Chef's Table is trying to uh, tell is that once, if you do not carry the tradition or the uh, the way that the food is cooked forward, it will die. Yeah. Like it will literally, that food will die because yeah. like, we're talking about, you know, women that are 100 years old cooking in Indonesia without anybody else doing it. Right. right? So yeah. literally, let's just say in 50 or even like 10 years, yeah. that whole, you know, food can die. It can die, yeah. Right. It's yeah. Anyways, I hope, uh, I hope that uh, inspires people to, uh, you know, stick to their craft. That's right, you know? yeah, yeah. So Be authentic, guys. Yeah. Have fun with it and be authentic. Uh, funny story. Not funny story. Sorry. It's not a funny story at all. My mom got sick. Yes. Right. Um, and she was in the hospital for about six weeks. Luckily, she's good now. But um, during the six weeks, uh, I went there every day and I introduced her to Netflix for the first time. Yeah. OK, like ever. Like yeah. she's never watched Netflix. Yeah. Right. So and uh, I'm like and she's Japanese. She loves Japanese shows like, Mom, there's an entire Japanese section yeah. in, in Netflix. Yeah. She's like, what? Yeah. Right. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, there's an entire Japanese section. Yeah. Right. And I start showing her stuff and she's like where did this come from? That's right. Hilarious. And I'm like, I'm like, this has been around for like 15 years yeah. or maybe 10 years. But anyways, so there's a show called midnight diner. Okay. Okay. And, uh, I guess it got super popular in Japan. It's really just a, a soap opera of somebody going into, um, an izakaya restaurant, which is just a, a tapas bar place in right. Japan. And it's just conversations. Yeah. Right. So I introduced that to my mom. Right. And she's literally, addicted she's addicted. Like she literally, I went over there just to bring my laptop yeah. so she can watch Netflix That's hilarious. and completely ignore me That's for four so hours. Funny. All right. So it's like, she's That's like, amazing, did you bring the laptop? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, okay, I'll go over there. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm like? And I'm like on my phone. Yeah. So, but yeah, she started watching midnight diner. That if, if pretty you cool. like uh, kind of, but it's, it is Japanese. So it's subtitled. But sometimes those shows are so entertaining to watch because you can, you can sit there and just, not even understand a word, but it's aesthetically, it just it looks really cool. <laughs> it, 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 the stories are cool. And, and yeah, it's, yeah. It, supposedly it's one of the most popular shows in Tokyo. Okay, nice. Right? So, yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah another thing that I watched, and uh, I watched this with my son, because I want him to learn what I saw as a kid, right? Yeah. So we watched Back to the Future. Oh, yeah. Right? So awesome. back, the only thing that's weird that if you look at 80s type movies yeah. for families, there was swearing back then. There was actual legit swearing in the the movie. So Back to the Future, Back to Future Two, oh, Back right. to Future Three. Yeah. They had legit swearing. Okay. Right. And like, and uh, I could see how the PG factor is more. Um, it's more family now. Yes. Right. And because they, the, uh, they, the, the, and they introduced that like fifteen years ago. Yeah. With the whole um, like PG or thirteen plus or. Yeah. And the ratings for the movie. PG now for families, you'll yeah. never see swearing. Yes. Right? So it's yeah. like, we're watching this movie. It's a great movie, but yeah. every time somebody swears, my son's like, yeah. they had swearing back then. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so that's one of the shows that's that funny. I'm watching. That's then, awesome. I got, you know what? I'm going to start watching that again. Yeah. Those are good movies. And, and my favorite was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles back then as well. The originals, one, two, and uh, three. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not no cartoon shit. The original. <laughs> I'm talking about like, 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 I remember it. I yeah, remember. The legit. <laughs> so you can find everything that you want to see on Netflix on Insaga.com. We have uh, yes, all the, the new releases in July, but that's what we, Rick and Khaled, have been watching on yes. Netflix. And uh, yeah, we need to get some more uh, Parts Unknown from Anthony Bourdain out. Oh, that'd like, be amazing. I think like, the, new, the new one should be releasing. I don't I, know no, it's already out, but it's not on, out on Netflix. That's what I mean. Right? That's so it's I mean. like, yeah, I think yeah. it's up to season eight or 10, right? right? Yeah, yeah. Um, And, uh, I, you know, being in New York recently, um, we were driving through uh, the area where Anthony Bourdain used to live, and it just brought goosebumps to me. And, you know, it was uh, it was one of those feelings where, and I took his book with me, Parts Unknown, yeah. and, uh, um, sorry, not Parts Unknown, um, Kitchen Confidential. Yeah. And, um, I, I've been reading that recently and it was, uh, it was such a, a cool moment driving through that area and, and just seeing where he used to walk and just chill and just be a regular person throughout the streets of New York. And, you know, he was a big New Yorker. Um, but he was such an inspiration. He still is. He's, he's kind of like a mentor to me. You know, these chefs on TV and these celebrity chefs, you know, a lot of people always shit on them, but to me, they're my mentors because that's how I got influenced. And Anthony Bourdain was, was one of those guys and, and, and reading his book. If you haven't read his book, 
You got to read it. I'll read uh, it. And I'll, I'll give it to you after I'm done. But it's, it's, such a, it's such a great, inspiring book. Yeah, I believe Anthony Bourdain was on another level of storytelling, yeah. right? You know, it was, it was kind of like, let's, let's, let's see what the culture is all about yes. with food. Yes. You know what I mean? And, and like I learned, I learned pretty much about all the cultures that he's ever done. Um, I, I learned all the cultures through Anthony Bourdain. Yes, and the cultures, but not only the cultural, but political side of things as well yeah. in different countries. It wasn't just it wasn't just food he was talking about. He was talking about food, culture, and politics, but in a very cool, subtle way. And that's what I was talking about earlier. That food brings conversation to the table, and you can talk about anything. Yeah, and everything will come out. You know, he went to, with Barack Obama, I think, in Vietnam or somewhere, in the middle of nowhere, having beers yeah, and noodles, and, and and it was just real conversations, very candid. Yeah, right. Which is really cool. uh, but one of the I would say that is probably the best food show I've ever seen. Yeah, ever. yeah, mine as well. Cool. Yeah. All right. Last topic. Yeah. Entrepreneurial tip of the podcast. Okay. And I'm going to throw out sacrifice. Yes. Right. So I think sacrifice, in my opinion, is probably the the most important thing for any entrepreneur. I right? think it's a foundation. If you want to make it big. Yeah. You got to sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. I You're mean, right. like every, everything, because you could have a great idea, Yeah, you know, uh, idea is important. Of course, an idea is important, yeah. right? Hustle is important, yeah. right? But if you're not willing to sacrifice everything for, uh, you know, the idea, then you're not going to get there. That's you know, right. and, and I always, you know, I can talk about this now because, you know, things are going well with uh, the media companies. But, you know, when 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 we first started, you know, uh, you know, I don't I don't come from money or anything like that. So it's like I we had to sell our condos, you know right. what I mean? Like and, and keep it going. Right. Yeah. And that sacrifice, mm-hmm. you know, it's like we didn't take our first vacation for four or five years. That sacrifice, yeah. you know, it's like you saw the vision. So you kept on going, even though you weren't making a penny that sacrifice right and if i didn't do those things right there's absolutely no way i would be in the position that i am now Mm -hmm. right you know because i saw it like you know i was was tunnel vision i was like you know it's like i know it's gonna work yeah i just have to get rid of all the material things to get there that's right right but uh yeah it's uh, i think sacrifice is the most important thing uh, when it comes to thinking about your entrepreneurial dream, yeah. you know, it's like, I, you know, you could have the greatest idea in the world. You could have the greatest, you know, uh, hustle. You could have, you know, uh, it, it just, the sacrifice is uh, probably the most key in my opinion. No, you're Thoughts? absolutely right. I think, um, you know, when I was, one of my favorite things to do when I was starting any business, uh, I think, you know, in, in the last... 15 years, I've, I've started up maybe um, three businesses before the restaurant. And all of them sacrificed my weekends. Yeah. You know, I was a wedding photographer. People get married on weekends. Yeah. Um, I, was, I had a security company. You know, people need security mainly on weekends. And so I sacrificed all my weekends. Even now in the restaurant industry, people want to eat on the weekends. And so the biggest thing that I sacrificed was my Friday and Saturday nights and my Sundays. And... I'm okay with that because when people are going out and getting wasted and having a good time or at home watching TV, playing video games, I would rather sit down on my laptop, put on some good music and just work and create. And I remember endless nights of me working till four or five, six in the morning, sometimes not even sleeping because I was so energized and so pumped about my vision that for me, that was my kind of energy and my 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 sacrifice to give up those nights of my friend saying hey let's go get wasted let's go out and do this no i can't come out because i'm not feeling well i used to make excuses i still make excuses yeah i don't i don't sometimes i don't want to go out on the weekends because i'm working so hard that me being at home in my kind of personal space i enjoy that more than getting wasted with friends and family whatever it may be you know there's one thing that i live by and that's a 24-hour rule. And you might have heard of this, uh, but it's kind of my own take, is that you know you have 24 hours in a day, right? It's up to you how you utilize it. I think I think I might have talked about this earlier, but imagine this. You've got eight hours, you go to sleep, right? Luckily, if you're lucky, you get eight hours. Yep. You have eight hours of work, whether you work nine to five, whatever it may be, you get eight hours. That's 16 hours right there. Take another four hours for commuting, going to the washroom, eating, you know, just simple stuff like that. That's 20 hours. You have four hours in a day now. Out of those four, even if you take three for random shit, 
You still have one hour. If you can't find one hour to make a sacrifice in your daily routine for yourself, then you literally have to step out of your bubble and see what's going wrong. Yeah. I started off as a food blogger 15, 18 years ago, and I used to sacrifice my time for one hour a day, and I used to make food, random stuff back then, and I bought a camera, I took pictures of my food, and I used to post it up on, like, uh, what was it, MySpace back then, or Tumblr, uh, on You're, e- on you're aging website. yourself, sir. You're yeah. aging yeah, yourself. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, <laughs> and that's how I started off, because I took that one hour, and I love what I did in that one hour, so I'm like, okay, I've got that one hour, but I'm still working to pay for my bills. You know, I used to work odd jobs here and there. And so I sacrificed more time in an hour and a half, then two hours, then three, then four. Now I've reversed it and I'm 24 hours doing what I love. And it's because of sacrifice. Like you're saying, you sacrifice so many things in life. We sacrifice so many things in life. If you can't make those sacrifices in life as an entrepreneur or in general, if you, if you don't want to reach your goals, then keep doing what you're doing. But if you want to reach your goals, sacrifice some things. Yeah. Stop playing video games. Stop watching TV, endless TV. Stop being on this, on social media. You know how many hours people waste on social media Dude, alone? On my phone, there's an actual tracking there is. system yeah. that says how often I'm on the phone. It's ridiculous when you first find out. Yes. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like it says uh, 34% of the time yeah. is spent on, like 34%. And I'm like, what? WTF? Yeah, right. So, but you're right. I mean, it's like it's you one of those things. Moment. Yeah, and uh, and, and, and tell me that you're not having the most fun you've ever had. Oh man, I'm like, loving every second of it because yeah. now I'm my own boss. I can take a trip to New York if I want to, um, and I've set up such a great team now at Rick's Good Eats. You know, my business partner being my mom and my whole team there. Shout out to Rick's Good Eats team um, that. All that hard work is now finally paying off. I've only been in the restaurant industry for three years, but it took me three years to now have a little bit of time for myself. But now I'm like, I want more. Yeah. So let's sacrifice some more and let's build a bigger empire. And because I've gone through 15, 18 years of sacrificing, it, that, is, doesn't, that doesn't mean I can just sit back and relax. That just gives you more energy to do more things because you and I have seen what we can accomplish in the last however many years and now we've still got a lifetime to go and we're building our legacy yeah you know you're building your legacy with in saga in brampton uh, in halton and other projects that that you still have in mind and i'm building my legacy with rick skid eats and and being a a food culturalist and 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 so forth but we've got so many other ideas that we want to put out there but this is just a small part of what we sacrificed you're right and and the funny thing so i was talking to i was on another podcast sorry rick i'm not cheating on you but but uh but (laughs) we were talking about uh, entrepreneur stuff and um and the thing that i i remember a teacher saying to me and i'm sure every teacher has said this to every student is that you know you got to live up to your potential yeah right yeah i'm just doing that now yes do you know what I mean? Like that's, yeah. that's all I'm doing is, yeah. you know, it's like every person has that potential, yeah. you know, I don't want to sound cheesy or like motivational, so you true, know, it's like man. every single person has the potential, yeah. right? It's now taking the action to, you know, fulfilling that potential. Yeah. And that's exactly, I think what we're, we're doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we always knew we had it, yeah. right? It's just, you know what? Just fucking do it. Like just we just had the balls to do it. it yeah, right? Exactly. So yeah. And you know so, what? We're not saying that it's easy. It's, it's hard. Dude, it's, it's so hard to to give up certain things and 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 live this lifestyle. Dude, I had to move back to my mother in law's house yeah. after I sold my condo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My wife's gonna kill me with yeah. it. Told her. but I mean, like, but that's the truth, well, you know. Because things, right? and that's like, you know, it's, it's like awesome now. But and you know, I got to, I'm the Canadian spokesperson, Tokyo Tourism, and and this and this and this, and I'm like, but you have to really sacrifice to get into the position. For you to be lucky. That's right. Do you know what I mean? Like it won't, luck just won't come. Yeah. Like you have to sacrifice, hustle and do everything That's you right. have to, There's to get yourself into the, yeah. It. There's a process behind it, right? Exactly. And like Nike says, just fucking do it. Yeah. I wish it was just, just fucking do it. Not just do it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it could just be just fucking do it here. Yeah, exactly right. So, right. but uh, who inspires you by the way? Oh, wow. Um, Sorry, Dylan. This is taking long, longer. Yeah. Okay. He's, <laughs> Dylan's like, wait, hold on. It's not over yet. Yeah, it's not over okay. <laughs> I've got a lot of people that inspire me, but it's just, um, man, that's a really tough question because it's not a single person that inspires me. There's a lot of people and a lot of things that inspire me that are around me that, that kind of motivate me to, to do bigger and better things. So if I had to narrow it down to one person, I don't think I can. Um, but 
what I like to do is I like to keep a tight knit circle. Um, sorry, that sounded like someone. <laughs> we can hear the chair. Yeah, do the move. It sounded like a fart. Yeah, yeah. But hey, <laughs> but, um, that's the way we roll. Yeah, way we roll. yeah, just fucking do it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, he, he took that literally. But uh, like, it's just there's, there's. I don't think there's a, a certain person. Um, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of uh, elements to that. But if I can say one person, um, it's got to be my mom. Yeah. And 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 the reason being, she has motivated me so much in my life uh and and just been a positive factor in my life and and always throwing positive vibes at me and she's all about positivity and sometimes like all right mom you know yeah it, it, that doesn't work and then she's like no you got to think positive and things will happen her her dream was to have a restaurant one day and i didn't know we were going to have a restaurant that's this amazing. early and i was like you know what mom i'm going to do this and i'm going to make this i'm going to this restaurant is in dedication of you because i learned how to make food because of you and we're going to do the old traditional food that you make. But she also did the fusion stuff. But with my take of the new generation of throwing the everyday elements into food and, and that being our slogan, the new tradition. And I think that's the biggest inspiration for me was to to kind of build on that uh, and, and and move forward with that. Uh, and so, that, yeah, I think that's 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 probably my, my biggest yeah, you yeah. could yeah, with your mom. I've met her a few times, and yeah. you could just feel the positive vibes coming yeah. off her. Always smiling, always yeah. you know, very positive. Uh, yeah. She's she's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So hear that, mom? You're awesome. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and she's heard me on the radio station too, right? Yes, yes, yeah, yes. So. She 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 knows who you are now. Last time you came in, or the, the two times before you came in, she's like, "Is that your trainer?" I'm like, "No, no, no that's not my trainer." But it's my trainer's I will friend. take that compliment. Yeah. Are you a trainer? I'm like, "Yes, I am." Yes, I am. <laughs> so what about you? Uh, my inspirations, and uh, I think I've told you this before, my inspirations are people that uh, I know, yes. that uh, that are, you know, kind of local, people that I can talk to, people that really I know the backstory of, you know, because yeah. with these, uh, you know, influencers and Instagrammers and, and, and superstars, you just really don't know, the, you don't know their backstory. Yeah. You know, you really don't, right? Yeah. You know, I want to know the real person behind Rick, yes. right? You know, I can call you up anytime, get advice, talk to you. I know it's real, yeah. right? You know, I talk to, you know, like, uh, I, I see people like DJ starting from scratch mm -hmm. right and uh you know i see him you know he's one of the top djs and always stuck to his craft yes. of djing and you know i i look up to him you know like i i see what he's done you yeah. know uh even like russell peters you know yeah. he literally used to pull cable at city tv yeah, yeah, yeah. you know to get into the door uh, of the comedy world you know it's like yeah. These are backstories that are real. Yes. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that are legit that I can, you know, I, I can't talk to Russell Peters, but I can talk to Scratch. Yeah. I can talk to you. Yeah. I could talk to, you know, there's a guy named Frost Acosta that has been breakdancing for like 25 years yeah. and has always stuck to his craft. I mean, and, and, you know, absolutely right. yeah, yeah, it's like, so it's not, I don't, you know, I, the Gary V's of the world and the rock in the world, they're fine they're to, fine, yeah. you know, kind of see their quotes and shit like yeah. that. And, uh, you know, and, and they're, they're masters at what they do. Yeah. Uh, and I study them more for communication purposes yes. than anything else yeah. than motivation. But, you know, I, I, my inspirations are like, you know, I'll be honest with you, people like you. Mm -hmm. You know, people like Frost, people like Scratch, mm -hmm. people like, you know, Russell Peters, Just the people, real deals, the know? real people yeah, that yeah. I know the backstory, yes. you know, I know it's real because yeah. how do you know the story of any influencer is fucking real. No, you're you right. don't. You're you just right. don't, right? And that's so, the thing. Like, if you if you can connect with someone, like right now we're doing this podcast, uh, and we get inspired by each other. Yeah. And that, and that's why we're doing this. It's because we can work and our synergies work together really well. You know, same thing with my wife. Like, I get inspired by her every day. I wouldn't be here without her. Yeah. And so the people around you, the the positive influences that you keep around you. Are the people that inspire you? And I think that's that's a tip for another podcast. Yes. is is kind of the uh, the support group that yes. you need when you first start, Huge. right? Huge. It's massive. Oh, like, dude, if you they don't see you go through the the, the ups and downs, and you just need somebody there. Yes, you need somebody yeah. like when when you know when you're about to cry. Yeah, you know, it's like it's like fuck. I mean, anyways. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's another topic. But yeah, right, right. as far as influences <laughs> go, I it's, it's people that I can talk to, people that that's I can beautiful. email, that I can like yeah. what's up, that I can like just say hey. I have this situation. What do you think? Yeah. yeah. Right. I, that's the, those who are my inspirations. You inspire me, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Peace. Later. We are out. Till next week. Who, okay. Let's, let's, before we go, who do we want on the podcast? Who do we want? Who do we want on the podcast? Hey, yeah, we want Patrick Brown, we, right? Patrick Brown. Yes. Okay. Why do we want Patrick Brown? We want to learn more about him. Yeah. I want to learn more about what he's doing for the city of Brampton and, and why he took that position. But I want to learn more about 
him as a person because all I really learned about him was what the media portrayed of him. Okay. But now I want to learn the real deal. All right. And I want to, I want him in front of us to talk okay. about it. Yeah. Okay. I, I like that answer. I, I like Patrick Brown because I just want a follow-up interview from what I did in the summertime. From and the summertime. I want yeah. to make sure he likes me still. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, we also want Trudeau, Shear, yeah. and Jagmeet to Jagmeet, come on the show. Yes, okay. Local figures. I right. definitely want some chefs to come on the show. Who? Uh, some people that inspire me. Um, there's Chef Nick uh, from Dialo, uh, which is from Toronto. Uh, he's got a really great story. We'd love to hear more about that. Um, you know, some of the bigger chefs uh, in, in, in Toronto as well. Um uh, I would love to meet Capra as well. Oh, I, he's he's going to come on the show. Nice. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. already said he wants to come on the show. He, he saw one of our episodes and like I, I think we swore and he's like, oh, it's it's raw. Nice. And he's like, he's like, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. He goes, I like that. I like that. Yeah. Nice. So it's like, um, I I definitely want to bring Lily Singh onto the show. Can we do that? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna reach out to her. I haven't okay. reached out to her yet, but I will. I, she's everywhere at the moment. Okay. Um, but when she's in town, I will see if she's able to come in. Okay. And if not, we'll make something work. Yeah, uh, all right. Or we can even ask her a question. Yeah. Um, and we can get her to to reply back my video and just play it on air. Okay. I think that'd be a great way to cool. also introduce her. I would love to have her here yeah. at the podcast studio, yes. aka my dining room. Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, if not Skype, if yeah. not video, we'll make something let's happen. do let's do it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Who else do we want? Who else do we want? Um, That's a hard one. I'm trying to think I, I I love wrestlers. Yes. Pro wrestlers, if yes. I mean Santino's coming on, so that that's that's a bonus. You know Tiger Jeet Singh, I do have a connection with him as well, dude. If you can get Tiger Jeet Singh on, yeah, yeah. Tiger any Lisa, any pro wrestler, yeah. I'm fascinated with we that world. Bring, we should do like a wrestling episode and bring all the wrestlers on. Oh, this, I, I'm I'm totally down <laughs> for that. Okay, <laughs> that amazing. Yeah. So okay, so that's uh, uh, that, Russell Peters would be cool too. Russell Peters, he'd be tough yeah. though. He'd, he'd be tough. Be tough because we could definitely get, we could probably get Scratch on. Yeah, Scratch. Right? Like Scratch would definitely. I've always wanted to meet Scratch. I haven't met him yet, but I would. He's would. one of the coolest dudes. Like yeah. just, he's he's been everywhere. He's yeah. done everything. He's yeah. he's opened up for Usher. You know, oh, he's man. opened up for Usher. Right? You know, it's like yeah. things like that and Santana. He's traveling so, with Russell Peters all the time. Yeah, being so his road DJ. Yeah, re- so really cool down to earth, cool guy. Just, uh, just you could just talk to him for hours and just let him talk. Yeah. So, but yeah, you know who else we want. Um, just people that inspire us, man. Who Dylan, anybody him? you want? Anybody? Dylan? Nothing? Nothing? He's like nodding. He's like, I want this to be over. <laughs> okay, it's over. All right. Well, think of some of you people. Peace. Later. Out.